Foundry, happy St. Patrick's Day, and welcome to day one of our devotions. Before we get started, I want to ask you to stay tuned to the end of this if you are a young kid who's stuck at home with nothing to do because I have a special challenge and project for you. But let's get started. We're going to read today from Revelation chapter 3, verses 14 to 16. This is part of the letter to the church in Laodicea. To the angel of the church in Laodicea write, These are the words of the Amen, the faithful and true witness, the ruler of God's creation. I know your deeds, that you are neither cold nor hot. I wish you were one or the other. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I'm about to spit you out of my mouth. This is kind of a strange passage, but hopefully we can discuss this a little together and we'll be able to understand why Jesus used that kind of language with the church in Laodicea. So reading about the hot and cold, it really reminded me of something that happened to our family last summer. So I write about this in the devotion, but I'd like to just quick tell you the story before we start. We were staying on the border of Austria, just, just beyond the Germany-Austria border. And we were on our way to Munich one morning, but on our drive, we just all were gasped when we saw this beautiful lake. It was enclosed between these snow-capped mountains. There was just this pool of beautiful fresh water. And it was kind of like, pull over, pull over, park the car. So Eric pulled over and we all ran out and we went to the edge of the water and started taking off our shoes, putting our toes in. And it was really cold. But we just looked around and we're like, when are we going to be here again? When will we ever have this chance? And I think it was Ethan who said, can we swim? And of course, I'm always about swimming. So I was like, yes, let's do it. We all changed as best we could to our swimsuits, got in the water. And to say it was cold is an extreme understatement. Um, it was hard to breathe almost when you were in it. But in that setting, it was so beautiful that it's like, I will never have this opportunity again. We just had to do it. And it was a ton of fun. What was crazy is as we left that, bundled up in our towels, got in our car, just down the road from there, I saw this huge glass enclosure and found out that in the next town there are hot springs and they run all year round. They have kind of like a greenhouse built around them where people can go and sit in a hot tub year round, even in the winter. So when people would be ice skating on the lake we swam in, other people were sitting in hot tubs just down the road. And that strange setting with the freezing mountain water and the natural hot springs is kind of like where Laodicea was stuck. Um, begin reading with me in the second paragraph of your devotions if you'd like to. Three cities lie in the Lycus River Valley. The first, Heriopolis, had hot springs that had medicinal properties. On the other end of the valley, Colossae boasted fresh cold water coming straight from the mountain springs. Stuck between the two was Laodicea. With no water of their own, they relied on a pipe system that meandered through the valley. What was left with, uh, Laodicea was left with was lukewarm water that they couldn't even gag down. A lot of them blamed the water for making them nauseated or even sick. So when Jesus began speaking to the church in Laodicea, they would have needed no explanation for what he was saying. They knew the Lord was comparing their own behavior to their nauseating water. He was saying, in effect, be something. Do something with your faith or it's useless. Either be healing to those around you, like the hot springs had medicinal properties, bring healing. Or be refreshing, like the cool mountain water to the people around you. This makes me think about my own faith. Does it compel me to minister to those around me? Or am I nauseatingly selfish? What about you? Does your faith compel you to bring healing to hurting souls by sharing the gospel? Do you refresh people around you by bringing the good news of Jesus, by, by encouraging them, by serving them? Think about these things. Maybe write out a response to God or discuss them with people that you're doing devotions with tonight. Now, on to the challenge I have for some of our kids. Speaking of being refreshing, we have many um, people who during this time where we have to stay indoors and avoid getting sick, we have people who are more in danger of that and they can't leave at all and they cannot have visitors. We have some people grandparents age or some people in assisted living homes that do not get to get out and they do not get to have anyone come see them. So we were trying to think of a way that we could refresh them, encourage them, that would feel kind of like a visit 
And our idea was for you kids from the foundry to take this week to get a piece of paper, work really hard and draw an awesome picture. Color it in, use crayons, use markers, um, use colored pencils, whatever you want. Just draw your best picture that you can. Use the gifts God gave you. And then on the back, write a note of encouragement to someone or have your mom and dad help you write it and sign your name. Then we will have you deliver those pictures here to the foundry. We have a special mailbox, not our regular mailbox, but a special mailbox will be out by the um, table we have set up with devotions and you can drop your picture in there. And then someone else is going to laminate it. They're gonna clean it properly and then find a safe way to deliver it to some of these nursing homes and other assisted living homes so that each of the residents there can have a visit from you through a picture and they can have some encouraging words from you through a picture. And that's our way to refresh them. So I would love for you guys to work really hard on that this week and have somebody drop it off at church and then we will send it on its way. Thank you, Foundry friends. I, I'm so glad that we could meet like this and I know it's kind of a scary time and a strange time and a lot of things are changing, but we know one thing, God does not change and we can trust in him. And I look forward to us getting to meet in this way and do devotions together and with other members of the staff over the next few weeks. Thanks.